So very warm welcome to all of you. Good afternoon to you all on a slightly better afternoon here in Wimbledon. It rained all day yesterday. Um, uh, we're delighted to have your company. Really, really thrilled to see so many of you and uh, also delighted to welcome this afternoon, Susan, who is um, the founder of a new clothing brand to me. Now, not new to her. She's been doing it for some time, but new to me. And I'm at the moment wearing a really lovely top. Um, I'm, I'm just going to tip my computer down. It, it's, a, it's a sort of a bit like a jeans jacket, but can you see what a lovely colour it is? Uh, it's a fantastic, it's lovely material, and um, it's from her clothing range. I'm also wearing a bra, which she sent me. I'm not going to show you that because that would be deeply embarrassing to us all. Um, but it is a very, it's very comfortable. It's part of the conversation I want to have with her. So um, these all come from Susan's brand, which is Bella Dinotti. And we're going to find out why it's called. It's got an Italian name in a minute. So um, Susan... You're on mute at the moment. No, I'm, right. I'm with you. <laughs> Hello there. You're with us, are you? Okay. So I want to, I want you to tell us how you went to Italy about 20 or so years ago, uh, looking for a husband, but actually found a business. So tell us that story, please, because it's quite amusing. Yeah, well, it was back in 1998. And I have to confess, um, I was a little bit desperate to find a husband and I was failing miserably. So I thought to myself, you know working and buying and marketing I thought right let me go to the, con the country where it's, e it's going to be easy work because I live in Yorkshire and the Yorkshire men are very are very coy um, and and not so gushing and romantically so I thought oh I'll go to Italy they're much more romantic over there this will be easy so off I went to Italy and realized you know in the first couple of months it wasn't it's going to be even harder than Yorkshire actually <laughs> so I, I end up there after a couple of years um, failing miserably on the husband front but uh, fell in love with a vest instead one day when I was in a market. A vest, which is a very interesting thing to fall in love with, because I don't think when I think of Italy, the first thing that comes to mind is not a vest. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how on earth did you, did you come across such a special vest? <laughs> Well, um, it was winter time and it's, it, I was in Umbria and it's surprisingly you know, colder down there. And um, I was on the market and I, and I went back to my sort of Yorkshire days. I'm a, I'm a um, farmer's daughter. When, when it got cold, my mum used to get me a vest. So I w went into the market and, and saw these vests at, at the market. I believe how beautiful they are. They had sort of, um, I've got one on now actually, lace, really beautiful laces on. And I, and I was blown away because I'd been used to sort of, you know, Denmark and things like that. And it wasn't as glamorous. So um, I was just taken in by the vest, wore it, and it was a merino wool. So I was, couldn't believe how, how pleasant it was to wear and how cosy it was like having a hug in a vest. So um, I just became addicted to the vest and I used to sit by the washing machine waiting for the vest to come out. And, and I was just totally hooked, you know. Well, I mean, that, so that's amazing. So you found this wonderful vest and uh, what, what made you, I mean, you know, it's, it's, as I say, it's a very entrepreneurial thing to go from that, that experience of just buying a lovely vest to thinking I'd like to start a company selling these vests. So, you know, how did that happen? Well, I think even as a little girl, it was all, I always wanted to run my own business. And it was, my parents run their own business. My granddad ran his own business and it was kind of in the blood. And even when I went to see my granddad say, Dad, I'm leaving corporate life and want to go alone. He said to me, oh, why are you going to do that, Susan? Your life will never be your own. You know, after five o'clock, you'll still be working. But unfortunately, it's just in my nature. Uh, so, so when I saw the vest, I thought, I, I love them so much. Surely I can't be the only one who likes them as, as you know, as, as the only one who likes them. And, and sure enough, it, it hit off. So um, tell me, uh, right, so that, I mean, that's the starting point, but then you've got to find somebody to make you these vests. You've got to find a manufacturer and, uh, and, and actually get the business going. So uh, what challenges did you meet along the way there? Well, that was interesting because um, I was in my late 20s and um, Italy, you know, what's that about? It was 23 years ago. Italy 23 years ago isn't the same as today. And um, most of the time I phoned up and they didn't even want to speak to me. If I wasn't Marks and Spencers, they, they weren't interested. They, so, I, so I found it really tough. And also I found a lot of the factories in those days were run by men and they just wouldn't take me seriously in my late twenties. Most Italian girls were just leaving university at that age. If, if you know, they weren't really career, career minded like the English women were. So in the end, I found the only way I could do it was that 
I approached an Italian man and got him to do all the phone calls, set up all the meetings, and I took him to the meetings. And he, he they would talk to him because he was a man, and they wouldn't take me seriously. And then he would just talk to me, and I'd give him the decisions. And, and that's how we got going. And I was really lucky. My first supplier, oh, most of them closed the door in my face, but there was one lady who ran a company with her husband, and she called all the shots, which was quite rare in Italy at the time. So the first company I dealt with was a woman. Wow. So you, you eventually got through this sort of terrible sexism that you'd, uh, that you'd met over there, which, uh, yeah, 20 years ago, that, that uh, I mean, I, I've met a lot of sexism in my life um, in, in various things that I've done, but uh, that, that, that's pretty late to be as sexist as that, not being yeah. prepared to talk to a woman, especially in a, you know, in a business context where you're actually buying because that's what you were. Uh, but you got round that and then uh, you, presumably you bought that vest back. Did you then um, sell on, online with that? How did you well, sell it? Well, we're going back to the sort of pre-internet days, really. And I literally used to draw my designs on fax and fax them through. And if they, they, didn't, if they had a problem and didn't understand, I had to literally get on an aeroplane, go to Italy and sort it out. There was no zoom or anything in those days um so um so that's that's how I, that's how i had to really sort of you know get it started um and i, I got a princess trust loan i was um um i was they, they gave a two, to me a two and a half thousand pound loan because it's a days of high interest and everyone was terrified to borrow money and i got and i thought i can pay that back if it doesn't work and let's just see how it goes and then i just kept doubling the sales and i went to shows and people would see the vests and touch them because they were so soft and then they would buy them, and it, and it just snowballed from there. Because were you were, sorry to interrupt? Were you selling direct to the customer? Were you selling them? Yeah. Uh, yes. Christmas, Christmas fairs, Christmas. They'd come out and buy them at Christmas time, and they would come out buying Christmas presents. Then the lady would say, "Do you know what? I'm going to buy one of these for myself." And, it, and it, that's how it snowballed from there. Okay, so so you weren't online at that. You didn't have an online business at that at that point. No. So then the funny thing was, I, when I before that I was a packaging buyer, and when I talked to blokes and they, they would, you know, try to get chatted up, they would say to me, um, um, what do you do? And I say, packaging buy, and then they lost interest. So then when I, then afterwards, when I got started the business, I said, oh, well, you know, I work in lingerie and I'm lingerie. <laughs> and, and then all the blokes were interested. It was dead easy after that. <laughs> so, um, so, so I managed to, um, um, at that stage in the business, I managed, to, I got married. And the day I got married, I launched my first website on the 1st of September. Wow. And, so it was 2000, two years later when we launched our first website, but even then the web wasn't so popular. It right. was all catalog. So one of my customers came to me and said, oh, I like your vest, can I buy some more? Do you have a catalog? And I said, no, I don't, I'll, I'll make a catalog. So I made one and my friend modeled in it and my friend took the pictures and she was a dancer to take that. And so that's how we got the catalog going. Wow, uh, yeah, you forget. I, sorry, I, I've I've forgotten that catalogues were so big before the internet. You know, now I have I do have catalogues like this come through the door, but invariably you just go online and then buy and buy online. I do anyway. Um, so that's a fantastic story. So you you'd found your husband by then, and you'd got this business going. You'd actually launched the business, and um, you then started to develop much more into being um, uh, an underwear. Uh, brand is that right so you you were then selling bras and uh, and various other aspects nightwear what was yes. your collection so, 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 so what kind of happened really was um I, I saw really that the big that was the point where the the big corporates were taking over the high street and the independent shops were starting you know starting to to suffer and i i saw that really the corporates were taking away women's choice and i thought um, you know, I was having problems trying to find a decent fitting bra. I then started talking to customers a lot more about their underwear. And they started talking to me about saying what the problems they were having. So in the end, I thought, right, I need to find some decent bras to these ladies. You know, they need something better quality, more supportive. And then I ended up learning bra fitting. So it just every time I couldn't find in the high street what I wanted, I started to, to you know, to work on it. So that's how I ended up making the collection bigger and sort of dressing women from the, the inside out, really. And it just snowballed. And yeah. everything was fit based because because I used to be um, I used to work for a clothing designer who did made to measure. We used to make to measure for Princess Anne. So I spent a lot of time measuring women and and working with their bodies, you know. Yeah, so, so I was very accustomed to accustomed to fitting things. Yeah. Well, what I, what I really want to do this afternoon. And, you know we've got you as a uh, we've captured you yeah. I want to really really um 
ask you as many questions as I can about bras and bra fitting because, and I'm writing a blog about it this weekend because th there is a statistic that 80% of women are wearing the wrong bra for them. And I think that that's quite alarming whether it's true or not I'm not sure I think you've got an opinion about that but the point is that it's unbelievably difficult to find a bra that really works for your breasts and all breasts are very different and I you know I'm fascinated by this so I I, so I want to find out from you just exactly what uh, how we approach it so when you let me go back a bit wind back a bit you just said you learned about fitting bras is that right yes so tell us what you've learned, because I, I think we need to know this stuff. Well, I've been on sort of courses and, and worked with um, the manufacturers for, for the last sort of 20 years. And there's a few very easy ways just to tell if you're wearing the right bra. OK, now there's two two main problems with bras. One, you could have the wrong size. And the other one is you could just have a poor quality bra that isn't doing the job. So with bras, the more you pay, the more strength and support you get and the more comfort you get as you go up the price go. So the simple way to tell whether you, you've got the right bra is number one, your bra should be comfortable all day long. So you shouldn't be wanting to get it off at the end of the day. You know, you should almost feel like you could sleep in it. So a good bra will be comfortable all day long. So, and then the next one is you can tell just by your body. So if you uh, look at yourself in the mirror, I'm just gonna just, you can just do it on screen for you. Your bra, your bust line should be halfway between your shoulder and your elbows. So that's where your bust line should sit. So you can look, check yourself in the mirror. And you know, do it on your friends is quite an amusing little thing I do sometimes at, um, with ladies. And then the other one is um, your bust should be in line with your rib cage, okay? So your bust should be lifted and centered, okay? So there's my rib cage. You can see my bust is stepping in, my nipple line is stepped in from my rib cage. Mm -hmm. um, and that that um, is um, that, that that shows you the correct level for your bust. And you're you can you should be able to achieve that with a bra, whatever your age. I fit ladies, you know, from teenagers, you know, right up into their 90s. And um, we can always get the bust into that into that position. And obviously, you know, different ladies, different ages and different body shapes have, have different challenges. Yeah, I, I mean, I was talking to you this morning and I feel like now um, my breasts as I've got older, I'm maybe echoing quite a lot of the, the women listening to this, is that they've got fuller, uh, heavier and droopier. So whereas they, they used to be lighter and higher up my chest, I think that's barely common. Yeah, that's, that's completely normal. They, yeah. they are no longer so yeah. high up my chest. So when I put my bra on, you know, I put my arms through the, through the, the, um, the straps, the, the bra's up here, my breasts are considerably lower. So I pull the bra down, then, then it lifts my breasts up yeah. And then I do it up at the back, and yeah. uh, and there's a sort of an approximation of that that kind of position as you've just said, because in fact, I've, I've looked in the mirror since you told yeah. me that this morning, and I, I thought, wow, that's roughly right. My yeah. view, that they are aligned somewhere between my my shoulders and my elbows. Um, I once went to a vet, do you know what? This is a name that's gone out of my head. Um, it's the very expensive bra. Yes, Rigby and yeah, Pella. I've got treated to a, a, a gift voucher of Rigby and Pella for a Christmas present from one of my daughters and went along to the shop in Stone Street. And I was incredibly impressed, to be honest with you, because I thought she'd come out with a tape measure and she'd start to sort of, you know, be, be doing lots of measurements yeah. and stuff. And she didn't at all. She just came in pri in pri a private room and she just said, can you take your bra off? I just want to see you with no bra on. I've got odd shape, I've got odd size breasts as well. So one, one's- Everyone been, has, yeah. Yeah, mine's quite noticeable. And um, she just looked at me and she said, you're a 34D cup. Well, yeah. I had worn, so I would have been in my 60s, I yeah. had worn a 36 C cup for my entire life. Yes. Right. That, that's the normal. Uh, nearly cup size smaller than she thinks. Yeah. Yeah. But I, so I thought I was big around the, around the ri ribs and uh, less full in the cup. Okay. So she went and got a few bras for me to try on and it was like putting gloves on. It was yeah. incredible yeah. because I was putting I was putting these bras on, which were the right <laughs> size for me. Plus, she said to me, because your bras are uneven, uh, your, your bosoms are uneven, 
you'll need to have them cut high enough at the top so that you don't get a bulge on one side, so, which was true. And she gave me them and, and it was just like, wow, can't believe it. And then the silhouette and the line was fantastic yeah. because I was wearing this, these amazing bras that actually fitted me. So um, that, was, that was my first experience. And I would say to anybody watching this, you know, for goodness sake, do you go to an expert, but you do this online, don't you, uh, Susan? So tell us a little bit about that. Well, we, we sell the bras online. We have our own shop in Yorkshire, okay. and and um, and we we stock all the same bras that stocked at Rigby and Pella. Um, and maybe what I can do to help your ladies give you some advice is um, is which brands to pick for which you know cup size. So, for example, um, the best. Uh, the best sort of full cup support comes from two main brands, a French brand called Enfront and a, a, a Belgian brand called Prima Donna. And they're great for sort of e-cup plus. Um, and you know, this, is, this is one of their bras, one of their, one of their famous bra, um, Madison. Um, they're great. And then if you are, um, um, we, do, we do certain things for A cups as well. You know, ladies with smaller busts who want a little bit more curve. And then, if you are sort of in the B to E range, the very best, the very best, sorry, the very best is um, uh, Felina or Contrell. They are, I've got one here. Felina, they they do um, they do great bras, and also, um, you know, Contrell, they do fantastic yeah. bras and Leisure B. There are sort of five best rated brands, and they're good for the smaller cut ranges. So what I would say is, once you get a fit in a brand, and that brand works you stick with that brand because the wire shape will suit you yeah yeah I think uh, that's very good um uh, really good advice I heard an amazing program I don't know anybody uh, listening to this heard it too it was on more or less which is this radio 4 program and it was the question is it true that 80 percent of women this is all about statistics and figures um are, you know are wearing the wrong bra and they had some expert from the uh, a university I think talking about it and she said the trouble with bra sizing is that you think that it's some kind of um sort of mathematical calculation between the measurement round your rib cage yes. which is your you know the size of like 34 inches 36 inches or whatever and then the fullest part of your breast and the difference between the two gives you your cup size she said the trouble with that is there is no standardization for bras around the volume of the cups so a d cup 32 d cup the D part of the cup on a 32 inch bra will be different from a D cup on a 38 inch bra, be a yep. lot smaller. So we think that we, we, know, we know we're a D cup, but we may not be a D cup in another mm. brand. So it's this whole thing about, because there's no standard, mm. it's like the wild west out there. You know, that's <laughs> why we're yeah. not all buying, we're not buying the right bras because there is no, you know, there is no correlation in sizing between uh, from one brand to another so you, that what you just said is what she said find something that works on your breasts and then keep Stick buying it, it. <laughs> so if you go for example if you go to a prima donna or a, or a felina bra or, or an unfront they normally have what i call a higher enclosure so they come a little bit higher over the top of the breast and it's more full cup so if you like more enclosure more control which often i when nearly all the ladies i fit that are that are e-cup plus they like the enclosure of the of the cup so we fit full enclosure bras so that the prima donna ones are normally like that um and then someone like myself who's um um i'm a 34d so when you start to go smaller back sizes and smaller cup sizes especially with age you tend to find you start to hollow here it's quite common okay? yeah now um if you've got a lot of hollowing here um we fit for example bras with a little bit of padding in the bottom okay so that's um, that's one from Contrell and the padding helps to push the, the bust up a little bit to fill the top of the cup and it makes the bottom of your breast look more perky yeah so we that's a um a padded um plunge but um I fit this on ladies of all ages just because you're getting mature it doesn't mean to say you have to wear you know an old-fashioned bra I mean and also what I love to say to ladies is you know enjoy color with your bras you know be adventurous um, I mean, today I've got a blue blouse on. I mean, believe it or not, I'm wearing a red bra underneath. Um, no, no one can see my bra. Um, so, you know, wear some colour, have a bit of fun, because, you know, I notice I'm getting older now. I'm in my 50s. You know, the colour of my skin is changing. And it's nice to 
have colour not just on top but also underneath. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a drum that we beat all the time about <laughs> yeah. uh, the importance of colour, obviously with makeup. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I mean, brass are such utilitarian objects in so many ways in the sense that we need them to do a job. But then there's, there's no reason that we can't get pleasure out of wearing them and also can't get pleasure out of beautiful fabrics, beautiful colour lace, you know, making them look pretty. I don't have anybody to see me in my bra anymore, but I could get pleasure out of looking myself in the bra. You yeah, know. you're so interesting. Yeah. I, I can give you a few tips if you'd like also, when you're buying a bra, what you need to look for, would that be helpful? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. So, um, <clears throat> when you buy a bra, um, it, this one's got a three, it's got a three section cover. I'm looking at the inside of it now. So the lower half gives you lift and the side panels gives you centering which stops that sort of east-west spread on your bra, okay? Um, what you're looking for on a bra, the ba bra back does all the work. So the tensile strength in the back is really important. So um, the expensive brands, um, the stitches per inch on, on the back of the bra is what gives it strength. So um, the, bar, the, and the back of the bra, the band of the bra is what does all the hard work. So um, the, the strength of the bra and the lift from the bra comes from the wires and the, and, and the band. You know, you, you may choose not to have wires, but it's still the band doing the work. So the, the most important thing is the bra shouldn't be hanging from your shoulders and you shouldn't have to keep yanking up your straps to yank up your, your bust. Um, so if you get a bra with a lot of strength in it, it will do the, do the lifting work. Now the wires, um, when you buy a bra, just tw tweak your wires, okay? Now, if you're, if your bra needs to be comfortable, the wires have to be soft and flexible. And um, a lot of the a lot of the high street bras, they're, they're very rigid and very, like they're like horseshoes, you know, really damn uncomfortable. And then the wire channels need lots of nice padding on them. So it doesn't doesn't irritate you and it doesn't um, dig in, so it's more comfortable. And then you need a reasonably strong, reasonably strong, firm elastic, elastic on the straps, not twangy. Yeah. Um, so they can do the job. So you can feel the strength of the elastic in your bra and that's what does all the hard work and that's what costs the money in a bra. Yeah, that's interesting because I was under the uh, delusion that you needed to keep your straps to hoik your heavy boobs up. You needed to make sure that your straps were, were, were you know, tight enough. But then of course you get this terrible mark on your shoulder if, if if that, that's the way it is. And you're saying that it's actually, the bra should be held in place by the strength of the back bit, the yes. elastic back bit that holds the position, uh, you know, in, in the middle of your back. And then the rest of the straps are there to support, but they're not there to, you know, to, um, to do the sort of cantilever lifting uh, thing. <laughs> and, and when you've got your bra on and you pull the, the, pull the back like this, yeah. they should only move no more than an inch right it's got to be firm to do its job yes yes so, um and and um well, another thing i'll say to ladies is don't be frightened you know after a bit to say bye bye to them don't keep them forever because obviously what will happen is this just gets more and more twangy yeah. and then the, the bra rides up your back and as the bra rides up your back it drops the cups and your bust will drop but also <laughs> it, it tips the wires and the wires tip forward into your breast tissue under here and then yeah. it hurts and your arms. Yeah, yeah. I, I think your message about comfort is absolutely key. I said to you this morning, we've had, uh, you know, specialists, founders of specialist shoe brands. Mm -hmm. And my experience, experience now of wearing shoes that are made for, you know, challenging feet like mine mm -hmm. means that I can now walk easily and my shoes are comfortable all day long. I don't have uncomfortable feet. And I think the same is true with a bra. You know, if you if you know you've got your bra on all day long and you can't, as you say, you can't wait for that moment when you unclip mm -hmm. it at the back and you sort of think, oh, thank God for that. You know, everything can sag and be loose. Um, that's not uh, that's not the, the ideal situation. Um, so I think that's a really good point. Um, we've just got a little bit of time left because you've you've taken this concept of fit into your clothing range so tell us a little bit how you approach that because you sent me a really nice pair of um jeans to have a look at here mm. and i chose the ones which are specifically for um uh, pear-shaped bodies uh, mm. because i have a smaller waist than hips and my biggest problem with trousers which is if they fit the hips they're too big on the waist and i get this bagging 
at the back and it's really annoying. So if I go to Mark Suspense, I can rarely find a pair of trousers that fit me uh, because of that. So tell us how, how you approach it. Yeah, so, so we have a little guide in our, in our catalogue um, to different body shapes and where you have your problem areas. So co common, yours is a common problem, Tricia, and, and I have the same problem. By the time I got it over my bottom, it gaps and I have to put a belt on. So um, it drove me mad. He spent, it used to take me a whole day trying to find a pair of trousers and I just have to go from shop to shop. So um, um, when I was researching the bras and I, and, I, and I got the best fitting brands, I then started to dig into trousers and we, all of our, a lot of our tops and all of our products, we make ourselves to our own designs. But the, the, the bras and the trousers, I stick with the brands who do nothing else but bras and nothing else but trousers because they're really specialists in it. So on, on, the, on the trousers, for example, we stock a brand called Brax, which comes in two body shapes. So your body shape is what we describe as a curvy one. The opposite body shape is um, where you can, um, uh, you get your trousers on, they're often tight on the waist, and then you get what I call, um, you know, sort of gapping under, bags under your bottom. Um, and that's normally for a lady that's more apple shaped, you're, you're, you're more pear shaped, and the apple shaped lady, um, and it also happens as a, a sort of a fact of life as you get older, and you start to lose the, um, the flesh on the bottom of your bottom, and the bottom neat goes smaller and you need a bit of a neater trouser. So we stock trousers specialist in giving you a, a better fit on the bottom, be it a curvy bottom or a, a neater, slimmer bottom. And often happens as, as the years mature, the, the thigh slims as well, it's quite a common, common factor. Um, and you want a little bit of a neater fit through the thigh. So we do trousers with varying thigh widths. So we stock here over 5,000 um, pairs of trousers. And when I get the ladies coming in the shop to visit us, it's always a challenge. I say, I don't want you to walk out without a pair of trousers that fit you. It's the same with a bra, you know. So we have lots of options um, on the trousers for different different body fits. And, it, I mean, it's explained um, well in the catalogue. In the future, we're going to have more videos on the internet so you'll be able to watch the different fits on real people as well. I'm looking for volunteers actually for that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, um, I have to say I was very impressed with these trousers when they came. Great. I yeah. decided to, to get size 12, so I'm, I would normally be a 14, but I decided, because they're quite stretchy, I don't like baggy trousers. I'd rather that they were they were on the tight side rather than the loose side. And these, um, you basically pull these straight up, but they look like jeans, so they've got the sort of jeans um, marking on, on the pocket and so on and so forth. And they, they were beautiful, they're beautiful, and they're really lovely quality as well. And I'm very, very impressed with the quality of this jacket. It feels, uh, High end. <laughs> so oh, yeah, thank you. Got very nice material, uh, and I love the colour of this jacket. This cornflower blue is is absolutely beautiful. And I have to say that um, I've been through this, and um, I've, I've earmarked quite a few other bits and pieces. I've <laughs> tried because, because the styles are so nice, and it, it's casual wear. It, it, it's it's good quality casual wear for. Well, this this um, particular one is is your summer one, but it's it's got some you've got some lovely lovely things in there. So I'm going to treat myself. And we've we've decided to give everybody today um, a ten percent discount code, haven't we? Uh, which is things outside of you. You're going to have a sale, but outside of your sale items, um, and the code is Trisha, which is just capitals T R I C I A. Is that right? Yep. Yep, uh, I've got the right code and everything. Yeah. yeah, so I just wanted to mention that because if anybody's watching this and they they really want to explore Bella I, I as I said, I'm definitely going to have another. I think a couple of pairs of trousers from your from your catalogue because I um I like the look of them a lot. But I think you've got some lovely t-shirts there as well. So really, really nice. And um, don't forget code ten percent off, Trisha. Can I just ask you a question before we start? My my group wanted to know if you had any thoughts about uh, knickers pants. Um, oh. do you sell pants? We do, yeah, yeah, we do. Um, um, we, we do a great one. Um, depends what you want, obviously. Um, we do some really, we do some really good ones. We do um, a, a um, all over, no VPL, very lightweight um, knicker that's really good to go under everything that's totally yeah. smooth and discreet. Um, we also do them with firm support in them as well. And um, control ones, if you want a little bit of tummy control. Um, and then also, um, I designed the first, I was determined to design thermal knickers that look pretty. So in the winter, I actually get a really cold bum. So, so I do a woolen silk knicker as well, for ladies with cold bottoms. And I did take up the sloggy challenge. I don't know if any of your ladies wear sloggies. 
um, I tried out sloggies and I thought, um, I didn't think they were that comfortable. So I did them with a bigger leg hole and longer lasting cotton fabric. So we do an all over claim uh, for that, which is um, our trouser brief, which is really good if you want a sort of um, longer lasting sloggy alternative. They're made in Italy. Okay. And that's lacy numbers as well, which got trouser brief at the back with the full coverage and the lacy front. So it's yeah. lots of options on the brief front. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. So Emily, what questions have you got for Susan? Uh, so Sandra asks, um, did you or do you speak fluent Italian? See. Si. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, to, I went out to Italy to find a husband and learn Italian. Um, and, I, and my Italian went reasonably well. Um, it's getting a bit, I'm starting to forget it now, though, but it's, getting, it's still reasonably good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one isn't a question, but from Sarah, she said she bought a long sleeve vest at Cheltenham Races about 18 years ago. She said they're yes, so beautiful, it's it. like wearing the best evening top ever. And now she has many of them as they are fantastically warm. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's us. Yeah, we were at Cheltenham Races. That's how I started, Trisha. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I can imagine at Cheltenham Races often needing a long sleeve blouse because yeah. it's often really, <laughs> yeah, they used to queue up really rainy them, weather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and then Liz asks, my breasts are not equal in size. How do I get a bra to fit me? So um, what you have to do with that one is you do have to fit to the bigger breast. OK, so um, and most ladies have that situation. And then on the slightly so you might have one cup that is filled and smooth and then the other one has a little bit of wrinkling on it. You have to just tighten your strap a touch more just to because the idea of the straps is just to keep the cups in place and keep them neat. So you just tighten the strap a little bit more on the wrinklier side and, and that should do it. And um, if it's a significant difference, um, we do do things like, you know, you can get little um, cup fillers like that are like what you find in a balcony bra and you can put a little filler over the top of what the, of the smaller one, but mostly just a little tighten up normally does it. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then Joan asks, do you make swimwear, especially a swimsuit that includes prop like a proper bra? Yeah, so we used to do them, um, but we don't do them anymore. We do have, still have a few of them in stock. Um, if if you're a lady that wants, like say you're a H cup or something like that, and you really want a really strong swimsuit that's going to really give your bust a great shape, if it's for a full cup situation, Prima Donna um, make their own swimsuit, this brand, and they are they're expensive. They are about 150 pounds each, but they are phenomenal. And you go for an actual cup fitting swimsuit. Um, yes, so so that's the way around that one, really. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then Sue asks, well, she says, I find the centre joining piece between cups is often too deep and digs in. Do you have any hints? Yes, a really good one for this one. Um, what happens there is, I, I come across this occasionally, it's not, it's, it's, it's quite a common thing, where a lot of ladies, their sternum bone here between their breasts sticks out a bit and can be quite prominent. So if you go for a, this is I'm going to compare two bras for you here. So this is a, a standard full cup bra, and that's the sort of depth of the centre front you get. Okay, and um, what you need to do is go for a bra with a slightly lower front in it, so it brings the centre front down and brings it below that sternum bone. So if you go for this one, like the plunge, it's just a shallower, so it's a shallower centre front, so it should sit under your under the sternum bone. Uh, if that doesn't work. You might have to go to non-wide. That's a great tip, thank you. Um, we've got one, which is just what is good for larger breasts. I'm assuming bra, which bras are best. Any tips on that? So, so really, my my two go-to brands are um, my two go-to brands are Prima Donna um, and Omfront, which is a French brand. You see them on see them on our website, and they really give fantastic uplift. Omfront has great what I call east-west control, so it, it, it centres the um, Omfront are really good for centering the breast, and I don't mean in an exaggerated way, just in a in a in a way to make your body look narrower. Um, and Prima Donna are fantastic for what I call vertical lift. That you know they they really it's a, it, this is an incredibly strong bra. You know they are about ninety pounds each, but believe me, you really get good mileage out of these bras. They're worth every penny. It will last the last um, three times as long as your other one. They are brilliant bra 
And then um, if you're sort of F, F, G, um, also we do a bra by Felina called Serenada, this one here, um, that is a great bra, you know, for the sort of EFG ladies. Perfect, thank you. Um, and Sue asks, what's the view on underwires? Some say it's unhealthy. Yeah, so um, there's no, at this moment in time, there's no medical evidence linking the wires to, to anything like breast cancer. However, what I would say is um, you've got to be careful, this comes back to the wires, um, to get these wires that have got the flex in them that's soft. If you go into the high street and you tr try and flex these wires, you know, that on, on the cheapest, like 25 pound bras, you'll find these are really rigid and your body isn't flat and rigid like the wire. So um, if you aggravate your body or, or cause it stress or distress, you know, that, that, that could, could give you problems. You know, like we discussed about the tracking lines, the pressure on your shoulders, when the bra band doesn't give you enough support and all the weight of your breasts hanging on your shoulders from the straps, you know, it's gonna cause stress on your body. So really you need to go for a sort of stress-free bra, but if you, but um, we fit ladies in the wide bras and wear them happily all their lives. It's getting a good quality bra. If you have any reservations, you know, go non-wired. You just, with the wires, you get the improved uplift and the improved shaping. Um, it gives a better definition under your clothes. And if you get a good fitting bra, really, it can almost take a dress size off you because you lift your bust line and it lengthens your waist. Okay, thank you. Um, and what do you think about minimizer bras? Don't do it if you don't have to. They're not that great. What it tends to do is they squash your boobs down and push them under your armpits. Um, so um, what I would say is um, don't be ashamed of, of your bust size. A lot of ladies, you know, are horrified by the letters and things. Just wear them with pride, put them in the right place. And they're never as big as you think. You know, like, um, uh, you know, women, are, I think women are just really too self-conscious, obsessed about things. Um, you know, I, I work with I work with models, and they're better looking than me. But it doesn't doesn't do, it doesn't invalidate me as a person. Um, you know, my nose could be smaller, but it's just part of me. I just get on. I say get on, enjoy them, wear them, put a nice bra on them, and also you can get. Um, if your your breasts are bigger, if you go for a bra that has got this um, a pattern on it, or um, you know, it's half solid and half lacy. It doesn't, when you look in the mirror, you don't think, blimey, you know, they, 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 they it's much more flattering on the decollete. And um, so just like um, we do the same thing in clothing, put on a print and it hides all your, uh, you know, it hides all the lumps and bumps, you know, with a bra, get a bra that flatters your, your cup shape and, 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 and don't, don't worry about it. You know, all my ladies come here, they all look great. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't think you have a problem. If you wear them well in the right place, you know, you look fine. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, someone else asked your advice for women with bigger breasts. Do you have a similar advice for people with smaller breasts? Yeah, so that's a personal choice. I get some ladies come in to me and they're an eight cup. They say, look, I need a comfortable bra. Um, and I'm not bothered about the fact that I haven't got a lot. I just want a nice bra, thank you. And we sort them out. I have some ladies saying, I just like a little bit more curve in my clothes. Um, so what, what I think there is, a um, little trick is, obviously, go, go for a padded bra. You can get varying degrees of padding. You can also, if you want, um, get a little a little shell like this to put inside your inside your bra. Um, and what you can do is you can wear a padded. If you want more, you can wear a padded bra and put a shell inside it. Just go up a cup size to accommodate the padded shell, and then you can just you know increase the amount of curve um, on the bust. And, um, and and you know that's a that's a good tip. So sort of work work more with the sort of t-shirt bras. And you can get them, you know, here's a, here's a t-shirt bra with, with, you know, with the padding in. And also it evens out, the, also a molded bra with the padding in evens out your breast shape, breast size as well. Perfect, thank you. Um, and Sue says, stra her straps drop down however much she shortens them. Do you have um, any advice on that? <laughs> yes, that is normally because you're wearing the band too big and the cup too small. So what happens is, um, I thought that was a woman's penance before I learned bra fitting. I thought it was a 36B like my mother and my straps continued to pop off my shoulders constantly. So what I did is I went up the cup size, I ended up and down the back size. So I ended up as a 34D. So a 34D is normally, a, a 34 back is normally about a 12, 14 body size. 
and a 36 is normally 14, 16 body size. That's a rough guide to your back sizes. 38 would normally be a 16, 18. So when I have ladies on the phone, they say to me, oh, I'm wearing a 38, a 38 size bra and it, and it keeps coming off my shoulders. And I say, what dress size are you? And she goes, a 12. It's like, no, she's wearing a bra way too big for her um, body size. Okay. So it's normally, and the, the, nearly, I think, Every time I fit the bra, the woman's always underestimated her cup size. Every time. You always need a bigger cup size than you imagine. Perfect. Thank you. And um, Jan asks, what would you suggest for a non-wired bra in a larger cup size that still looks and feels good? Um, we do we do a range by Anita. Um, the soft... Getting a really glamorous one in, in non-wide is more tricksy in the big cup sizes. And we're always fighting with the manufacturers to do something better um, on that front. But we do a bra, um, we do a bra by Sousa, which is all lace. Um, but one of the most successful ones we have is um, Anita Safina bra. Got a, it, it, the, 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 um, the fact of life with non-wide bras is as you go up the cup sizes, because you haven't got the wire, they have to put a little bit more beefier construction into the bra to, to give it the support and shaping that it needs. So, um, so that's we do that bra in pink now, which is a bit which is prettier and that's nice. It's got the embroidery on it. But Anita is a very very comfortable brand. Perfect, thank you. We've got a few. Um, I don't know if we'll get through all of the questions, but I'll just fire off a few of the quicker ones. Um, Cindy asks, do you sell in the US? Oh no, we don't. <laughs> but you can. Oh, but you can you can order and we can ship to the US. We do that. Yep, definitely. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just have to pay for international shipping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, and Sarah asks, where is your shop? Uh, so it's in Malton, North Yorkshire. And that's um, on the A64. It's about 30 minutes from York. Perfect. You can get to it straight on the dual carriageway. We're just off the dual carriageway. Um, and Sarah asks, when wearing M&S bras, I find I have floppy flesh under my arms. Do you know why that is? Right, so um, uh, unfortunately, that that is a little bit of a fact of life. Okay, um, it, I, I call it the softening of the years, and um, we do get little soft patches here, um, and you can lessen it. Um, when you put your bra on, so you've got the centre front of your bra here, so the back clasp of your bra should sit lower at the back than the centre front, and that tips up your bust, and it um, stops the pushing the flesh up, you know, by the bra riding up at the back. Um, different ladies have different amounts of overhang, but it, it is unfortunately, there's no magical solution with that one. If I was gonna give you any tip, the best, the best backs and the firmest backs I've ever seen are from swimmers. Ladies that swim right into the 80s and 90s, they have really good skin tone and good muscle tone. Um, yeah. But it is a difficult one, that one. Mine's going a bit sagging under there too. <laughs> Quite normal. Thank it's a bit you. you can't really keep firm. It's harder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And then the last one from June, Susan. Did you ever find a husband? Yeah, I did. It. I found him just down the road. After all, I <laughs> did a European search, and he was just down the road. I lived three miles away. I'd known him all my life. <laughs> That's a great story. Thank you very much for answering all this. Twenty-three years later. Wow. <laughs> There's some kind of lesson there, Susan, for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about you know these italian men yeah. you know stick with a good yorkshire lad that's yeah, good yorkshire man, yes. yeah. <laughs> okay uh susan that's been absolutely delightful thank you so much and um, i have learned so much in the last hour or so <laughs> and um, i'm now going to go fully equipped and uh, knowledgeable into all bra buying in the future so thank you so much for that and I'm absolutely thrilled with this top I think it's beautiful and I'll just remind everybody there is a 10% off code for just for you guys so thank you for that um, by the way that code is going to last until we decide until the end of this month so it'll be um, it'll run out at the end of June and I'll check Liz, I don't know if it's lowercase or uppercase, I'll check, but try both if you, you know, and, and I'll, I'll check they've got it in the right format. Just so. What we'll do is we'll, we will put the code and the date um, underneath the YouTube video, but we will also put it, um, we'll put it on the blog on Sunday because I am going to write the Sunday blog about, uh, about bras. Okay, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, lovely to meet you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for joining bye. us. Bye-bye.